All right. Today what we're going to do is we're going to continue looking at parameterized queries. We're going to do another example or so. Um, but we're going to look about how to, uh, another way of parameterizing your query. So far our parameterized query has looked like this. Where we've stayed on one page. We've done what's called a postback. In other words, a page, when we click the button, submits back to itself. That's what's called a postback. All right? So, in other words, we've had this, this case. Or we've had a drop down on the top of the screen. You select something. I think we selected sport. And then our SQL statement pulled up all of the leagues for that sport. All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that to the next step, where we're going to pass data between two pages. All right? Remember, this control here, the drop-down, has persistence. Someone run a spell check on that. As persistence. What does that mean? It means that if I take this and I post back to myself over and over again, the page remembers. The page maintains state for this control. And if you don't think that's a big deal, do some PHP coding where the controls don't maintain state. So you have to go in manually if you had a page that submitted back to itself and there was a form. You would have to write code to remember what the old value was and replace it and put it back in the control. So these controls maintain state. And in that way, we have a cycle. We have number one, the page displays. with default values. Number two, we change the drop-down because we have um, auto postback enabled. That causes the form to submit back to itself. Step three, the page redisplays using the new values. Looks like valves, values. Is everyone clear on that? That's what happens. The first time it comes in, it showed baseball, which was the default selection, and showed all the all the uh, leagues for baseball. I change it to softball. Page resubmits back to itself, but it remembers that I changed that to softball when it redisplays it. All right. Notice again that this is happening. This is actually submitting to the server. If you watch, you can see the status flicker a little bit, and it's going in resubmitting because it has to re-retrieve that data from the database. <coughs> so we're maintaining state. Um, that's done automatically. All right, that's done. We, we don't have to do anything for that to happen. It, it, it maintains state by default. What we're going to look at next is an example where we're going to maintain state by passing from page A to page B. This is staying on page A. And if you stay on page A, those controls maintain state. But if we do something like this, where I click on the league name, I get sent to a page that shows all the teams for that league. Then I'm not staying on the same page. I have to pass what league I clicked on to page two. All right. So with the postback, I can count on the ASP.NET controls to remember what league I wanted to see, or I'm sorry, what sport I wanted to see. 
In this example, I'm going to pass the, I need to pass the league information, what league I want to see to the second page. What am I going to pass to that second page? The values. The values and the league ID. The league ID, right? Remember, you retrieve things via league ID, you via the primary key to the table. So you retrieve things based on the primary key. If I want to see all the teams for that league, what do I need? I need the league ID. All right. How can we pass it? We can pass it several different ways. One of the most common ways of passing it is via the query string. Does everyone know what I mean by the query string? All right, if we look at a URL, if we look at a URL, a URL looks like this. We have the protocol, HTTP. We have the domain. Um, www.example.com. We have the directories. We have the page that we want. And then after the, the, the page name, we have a question mark, and then we can have some parameters that we're going to pass. In our case, we're going to pass a league ID. Let's say I want league two. All right. <coughs> the query string is a part of this, part of the URL that's after the page name and after the question mark. You know, query question after the question mark is a query string. And the query string looks like this. The query string is a set of ordered pairs where the first part, the part before the equal sign, is the name of the parameter that we're passing. Then you have an equal sign. And then the second part is the value that you're passing. So name equals value. If there's more than one thing on the query string, and you can have more than one thing on a query string, it will be name equals value, ampersand. Name two equals value two, ampersand. Name three equals value three ampersand, and so on. So that's another way of maintaining state. All right, when we talk about things we maintaining state, we're talking about the website remembering something. All right, remembering something, specifically remembering something from one page to another, even if that page is itself. That, that whole thing is maintaining state. Why is that such a big deal? Because HTTP is a stateless protocol. What do I mean by that? It means that the request that you make to a web server, each request is a standalone <coughs> request. All right? Each request is independent. It's a standalone request. Now, that may sound counterintuitive, right? Because if each request is a standalone request, how does Angel, for example, remember who you are from the time you log in to the time you log out, right? You go to many different pages within Angel, but it somehow remembers who you are. So if each of those requests is a standalone request, how does Angel remember who you are? It remembers who you are through one of the mechanisms of maintaining state. All right? And one of the mechanisms within the ASP.NET framework of maintaining state is via the controls themselves. The controls by default maintain state. A second way, and this is a more general way, because this would work in a PHP application as well, is that you can remember stuff by passing it on the query string. So I click on this link. I'm going to put on the query string the ID that I want, this page then is going to pluck that value off the query string, all right, and is, can use that then to retrieve all the teams for that league. All right? Clear so far? I, I mean, clear at least conceptually, we'll, we'll see it work in action. It needs to pass it because otherwise, if we didn't somehow pass it to page B, by the time the server got to hitting the request for page B would have no idea what we clicked on page A. 
We need a mechanism to remember that. And remembering stuff from page to page or from submitting from one page to another, all that falls under the general category of maintaining state. So the .NET controls maintain state for you if you're talking about the same page. The query string is one way that you can maintain state um, between two different pages. Is anyone aware of other ways of maintaining state? Caching isn't really maintaining state. You go and you log into Gmail. You click a little box that says remember me on this computer. Because I hope it's your computer and not a public computer. Like cookies? A cookie would be another way of, of maintaining state. One way to maintain state is to write a cookie out. That actually maintains state between sessions. So that actually does one better. So in other words, if I log off and log back on, you know, if I shut down my machine and come back, depending on the parameters set for that cookie, it's still going to remember who I am. All right, so a cookie would be another way. <coughs> Pardon me? Application. Application variables um, possibly maintain state. Form post. <laughs> oh, now you're just reading alpha Google. Uh, query string and session. Session variables are another way that we'll pick up. And, and we'll discuss at least some of these other techniques. Because this is a big deal in web development. That's the one thing that is, how do I want to say, my own adjustment from being a programmer that worked on non-web applications to web applications, this is like a big deal. right? Because typically, you know, if you write a desktop application, you don't have to worry about the application remembering stuff. All right? because it's in the application somewhere. Here though, each page, because of the protocol, is a separate request. So you have to somehow use some mechanism to get data from one place to another. All right, so this is what we're gonna build on today. So in order, or this is what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna build on the example so that we're gonna change this league name to, instead of being just the league name, it's gonna be a link. When we click on it, it's gonna open up a second separate page it's going to pass the league ID over, and it's going to retrieve all the teams for that league. All right, that's step one today, and then we'll go from there after we're done. By the way, I would be remiss if I would not congratulate David for being here on time today. Oh, yes. All right. You know, I didn't realize he was here. Or he was running. Dave, sure. are you early to his class on Wednesdays? Yesterday? He doesn't have my class Wednesday. I thought I saw you. He was there for extra help. Oh. Yeah, he's taking advantage of my my open lab policy. Oh, are you stalking these people? What's going on? I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I saw you. At, at, four, at 7.42, you were in the Eiloft building. At 8.30, you were going to your car. But uh, last Wednesday, he was in your car at 8.27. What is the difference in the three minutes? Yeah. <laughs>
see class not canceled. Of course, I'm not seeing that here. You're on the screen? Yeah. Oh, maybe your uh, projector, projection thing. It's working on the projector. Well, it's working on the projector. It's right? working on the projector, yeah. <laughs> Some fell out. You're, you're making it worse. Yeah. No, that doesn't go. So I think on the soft side. I have the black button. I don't see camera. That's not fair. Everything I own is pink. If you if you were pink to school on 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 Thursday, I'm going to report you to school. There it goes. You're on now. All right. Today was a today was today's wear pink day. By the way. It I, is I, I take it that, that everyone heard, at least some of you, at least one of you, heard my announcement on Duck Radio on Tuesday. I have passed my DJ test. I'm now officially a DJ on Duck Radio. I know, but that's not, I want to hear Indeed, like a talk show and all that. I don't want to hear like you play records. I want to hear like, today we're going to talk about session variables and like PHP. <laughs> Well, I do that. Today we're going to talk about jazz music. Here is some Thelonious Monk. So, yeah. So, all right. You know, any student can have their radio show. No, they don't want me on the radio. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that you could, you could go through the rigorous DJ training program and... Um, what is that, a hippie circle with some bongos? <laughs> No, no, That's we just we just learn the technical I things. I just hear you for I equals I plus one. It, it is it is funny. It is funny because you can tell that the guy that trains usually trains students because like he reminded me like not to say bad words on the air, you know, and all that. So it's like yeah, I'm pretty well covered as far as that goes. I think I can self censor, you know, as far as that goes. It's kind of like. Uh, I only learned how to swim. I was in my 40s when I learned how to swim. I did not know how to swim before. And I actually took swimming lessons at the Amherst Pool, and my swimming instructor obviously had only taught children before. <laughs> because she was saying things like, make ice cream cones in the water, make ice cream cones, scoop the ice cream, scoop the ice cream. <laughs> my father just threw me in a pool when I was two years old, and he was like, learn to swim. We found a way. Yeah, that kind of explains a lot. <laughs> Don't worry. I did, I did that with my kid, my three kids. I mean, now I have two kids. So yeah, let me let me guess. The swimming part wasn't bad. Getting the anch getting the anchor off of your ankle was the hard part, right? Untying that. It doesn't come up for air right away. It just means he wants attention. Yeah. Where's the trauma? He's just being a family guy. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Remember, if your child doesn't return to the top right away, you need just to like, attention. You need to like, you know, like offload a lot of that brain power and all that. I, you know, I, I I wonder about that. Like, how many, how what what great things I would have been capable of if I did not remember, you know, what happened in an episode of the Brady Bunch, you know, from 1972. That was one of the greatest episodes of Married with Children ever, and all that. Like, I don't know if you ever watched that show. I, I watch really it like, from time to time. Where they, where like, where Kelly was going to go on a, a game show, you know, a sports game show, uh -huh. and they taught her like everything, you know, about sports, right? And uh, but the, but he's like, well, for everything she she learned, you know, what I'm saying she's gonna lose something, and that's just you know how it is, right? So she gets to the end and all that. And the last question she wins, she gets like the final jeopardy or whatever. And they're like, who scored four touchdowns in one single game from Polk High? And now I was like, you know, this proves something. He's like, this proves that there is a God. Like God loves right. me and all that, right? And she's like, you know, she's been hearing right. this every day her whole life. Right, right, right. She doesn't get it. She loses. And then and he goes, audience, everybody in the audience, like. Al Bundy. I, I do like, like I I do like that show because like I know people like that from my high school where you know that their greatest accomplishments oh, yeah. in life have been in high school you know whereas for most of us that is simply uh, you know four years of our life you know and good things happen bad things yeah, happen, good things happen yeah things but be different coach would put me in. yeah all right so I'm gonna go in and. Uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to add some league or add some teams for these leagues, just so that we have something. Um, 
oh, we don't have a team table. So let's go in and create a team table. I actually, that, I like that actor is in Modern Family now. Yeah. I, I, I think he's pretty funny in that, too. Yeah. He's from Youngstown. Oh, really? Yep, he's from Youngstown. It, it's almost like he's the same character, just yeah. moved on, you know, in a, in a way. He'll always have that. Well, right, right. That was just a modern man back in the day. That was great. Now we're all Because of political correctness. That's right. Obviously. Because somehow income inequality is still a good thing, but talking back to your woman is a bad thing. Wow. Dude, this goes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm... Did he really just say that? I'm, 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 I'm close. I'm close to... I, I need one of those... Uh, um, we, we need to be, uh, if you remember when Richard Pryor was on Saturday Night Live, which probably you don't remember because it was probably many years before most of you were born, but he had a, he had like a seven second delay or something like that because they were afraid he was going to, you know, being on a live show and all that, swear. swear. So they, he was on like a little bit of a delay, so if he would have said something, the censors would have a button to <laughs> press. <laughs> I for some reason it looked like it was disabled. You can, no, you can just click and drag it right over. Yeah, you, can. you don't have to add. You can just click and drag. Oh yeah, we can do it a bunch of ways. If you add a table, you have to, you have to add it to the family. see how that works. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say file new, file, and I'm going to say, I'm going to call it on my web form, I'm going to call it Teams. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to create my parameterized query. And I'm going to create my grid view for this. So, I'll go in and I will create, under data, create SQL data source. Going to write mouse on it. Uh, well, I'm going to change the, the, the title of it, by the way, or the name of it. DS Teams. All right, and I'm going to go configure it. <clears throat> connection string, I want to use the current connection string that we have. Remember, you only create a connection string the very first time you connect to a database within an app. Next, I want to pick my select statement. It's going to say, I'm 
What's my select statement going to say? Select. Select. Select, okay. Something. 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 I'll put the star. Yep. From, from. Something else. Teams. There we go. All right. Where. What. We want to see the teams for a specific league. Where league ID matches. Where league. Or, yeah, league ID matches league ID. Where league ID matches question what? Mark. Question, question, mark. Mark. question mark. We don't know the value that we want. We just know that that value is a parameter, which means it's going to be supplied at runtime. Okay? Go in here. Now, now I have to say where it's going to get the value from. Well, it's going to get it from the query string. Before we pick control, because we were staying on the one page and we were submitting it back to itself. This time we're submitting from page A to page B, and we're setting the data via the query string. It's going to ask us the name of the, of, of the field on the query string. It does not have to match the name of the database column. It can be whatever you want, but remember what you pick because... When you create the link, you're going to have to match whatever name. I'm going to pick the name ID. All right. Go on the test query. Put in three for my league. And there's an error. I'm thinking maybe it's called team and not teams. All right, sure enough. All right, so now this works. Hit finish. I can go in and I can create my data source. Or uh, I create my data source. I can create my grid view now. I can choose my data source. And I could do any kind of fancy editing or whatever that I wanted to. Now, how am I going to test this? If I click run. You have to add a link to that. How can I give it a query string without creating a link? Stick it up there. You can just, just, just manually put it in there. Manually put it in, and that's what I'm going to do. Right now, it's not showing anything. Why? Because I haven't given a query. I haven't given a value for the query string. So if I go in here and I say, question mark, ID equals three. There we go. ID equals four. What if I do ID equals 44 or 43, something that doesn't exist? Do I get an error? No. Right. You don't get an error. You just get no results. All right. Remember that if you do a query and no rows are returned, from the database's perspective, that's not an error. All right. That simply means it, it did its job. It told me all of the teams that had a league ID of 43, and there aren't any. So it, it, it succeeded. So there's no error. Would you want to write some code yourself and maybe handle that in case? Maybe. So, you know. Depends. Um, we'll see. The way we're going to create this with a link, it's going to be impossible to do that unless you type it manually. Okay. People could. People could, and then they get what they deserve. That's true. Exactly. All right. So is everyone clear on this part? This part is exactly like what we did before with one addition or one difference. The difference is, is the parameter that we're getting is not coming from a control, it's coming from the query string. So this page, we can't, we can't run it without giving a value. If we run it without giving a value, we're not going to get anything. So we have to give it a value. And if we do, it will work just fine. All right. Let's go back now and create the link. All right. And I'm going to create the link wrong the first time. Just as a warning. And then I'm going to go back in and create it right. What do I need to change here? Do I need to change the data source or do I need to change the grid view? Why do you say the grid view? Data source. I say data source. Okay, everybody's got opposite. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. I don't care. Yeah. What is the data source? Data source. What data do I need?
to make this link. If I want the league name to be the link to the second page, it's conceptually what data do I need to make the link? I need the league name, right, to be the text of the link. And I need the league ID to pass to that second page. Is that any new data that is not currently in the data source? We're already selecting league ID, league name in the data source. So we have all the data we need already in the data source. What do we need to do? We simply need to format the grid view to take that data and make it look like a link. So we don't require any different data than we have already. We simply need to change the way we're displaying it. So this column, let's set this to start page. <clears throat> this column right here in the middle, all right, we don't want to be text, we want it to be a hyperlink. We still want to say the name of the league, right? We still want to say Babe Ruth. But the difference is we want it to be a hyperlink to that other page. Now, what should the link look like for this page? What should the link look like for this page? Well, what's the, what's the URL that we want to call on this page? The other page. The other page, which was teams.aspx. But is that all? It should be a hyperlink. Pardon me? It should look like a hyperlink. It should look like a hyperlink. But the URL for that hyperlink should be to teams.aspx, and what other information do we have to put on this? We have to put question mark ID equals, and then the value. Yes. And in this case, for Babe Ruth, the value would be 4. All right, so let's go and do that. I'm going to go in, and again, this could be done a couple different ways. I'm going to do the way I think is most convenient. I'm going to delete the name field. Because it's easier to create a link than to change a text into a link. So I'm going to just delete the name for now. I'm going to go here and I'm going to click I want to add a hyperlink field. We can add to our form or our table a hyperlink field. I click add. Now. The data text field is what we want to see for the text of that link, right? What we want to see for the text of that link. So what do we want to see for the text of that link? The name. So I'll go and I'll pick, and I'll go and enter in what I call it, league name. I'm not sure why that's not populated, but I'll because go. Because you never, because you create, I don't know, never I'll pick league name as the text. I think that's the name of the field, but we'll find out now, won't we? What is the URL that we want to go to? Now, I'm going to do this wrong at first, and you could probably guess what, what is wrong with this. I'm going to put teams. ASPX. No, you don't need HTTP because remember this is going to be in the same folder as that. You only need the HTTP in front of a link if, if you are specifying an absolute path. I could put HTTP in front of it, but I'm in the same folder, so I'm just going to put the name of the page. You told us not to put a, only use relative links. Pardon me? One of the classes you told us only use relative links. Um, yes. That was your advice. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go and run this. Hey, the name's gone. Well, the name's here, but it's not a link. Let 
me go in and make it a link. I think there's one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to move this temporarily up to here. So it's a link now. If I click on it though, didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because that link, if I look at it, doesn't include in the query string. So in other words, this link is not static. It's dynamic. It depends on the data. The link for this guy should be teams.aspx question mark id equals 4. The link for this guy should be teams.aspx question mark id equals 5. For this one it should be teams.aspx id equals 3. So let's go and change that situation. Let's go and make it the way we want it to be. So I'm going to go into edit columns again. And this is where I went wrong in the first time. Navigate URL is if it's a static link, all right, where we always want to go to that URL and there is no dynamic piece of it. It's about target. Pardon me? Do you want to change it to the target? No, I want to change it to what I had before. I thought what I had before would work in both cases, but it didn't. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put this here. All right. Data navigate URL format string. Now, I have to specify what fields from the data source I want to include in the URL. So I'll put league ID. Now, here's the tricky part. I have to format I have to specify what I want to do with that ID. Alright. What do I want to do with it? I want to put it right here. So my URL is not simply teams.aspx. It's teams.aspx ID equals something. Alright. Pardon me? Question mark. ID equals something. Um... I wish it was that easy. It isn't. Because what we need to do is we need to do curly bracket, zero, curly bracket. Why curly bracket, zero, curly bracket? Because it's a replaceable parameter. It's a replaceable parameter. And it's the first on my list of parameters. Remember, in programming, typically we count starting with zero and not with one. So in other words, here's my list of parameters that I'm passing. Short list, right? Just one thing. I'm passing the league ID. So that's in the first position. The first position is designated by curly bracket, zero, curly bracket. So now I'm creating a link. The link's text is going to be part static and part dynamic. The static part is going to be, the first part of the link is the same for everyone, teams.aspx, question mark, id equals. That piece is static. The dynamic part we're going to fill in from the, uh, from the list of fields that we said we're going to fill it in from. And in this case, it's going to be the zeroth item on the list. So now if we go and run this, we should have success. Zeroth is that a technical term? Zeroth is a technical term. Or is that a character from Flash Gordon? There we go. Zeroth. I think I did it for three and four. And now it works. So, that second page is pretty much like how we created the first page. The only difference being is we specify a parameter is going to come from the query string. What do we need to do then? We need to create a dynamic link to that page 
How do we do that? We create a hyperlink field or a hyperlink yeah, field on our data grid view and we specify what field we want to have for the text of the link and what field we want to have for the um, for the um, uh, um, um, ID of the link. All right. Now, one thing I do not like about this, if I click on this link, it shows me the league ID and all that, but I kind of would like to see the league name in there as well. All right. We have two choices of how to solve this. Actually, there's a bunch of choices. We could probably think of several of them. But I can think of two immediate answers that come to mind. Add it to the query? Add it to? The SQL statement? I could add to the SQL statement. I could join it to the league ID. All right? But that seems to be a little bit unnecessary because we're only pulling one league. And we therefore, we don't need to join every row in the table to it. So one thing I could do is I could create a separate SQL data source to access and pull the league from the database based on the league ID. We're passing a league ID, right? It's on the query string. I could do that. That seems like a lot of work. What I could do instead is I could pass two parameters on the query string. A parameter for name of the league and a parameter for the league's ID. That will save me on this page having to re-retrieve that data from the database. And the only potential issue that you could run into is between the time I am looking at this and the time I click this link, someone could have edited the name of the team and changed it to Lily something else, Lily 2 or something else. All right? Which is probably pretty slim chance. All right? So what I'm going to do, and I'm only going to do this as a, as a efficiency, is since it's not likely that we're going to get into trouble with people changing that, I'm going to pass the ID and the name. And then I'll just pluck the name off of the query string and populate a label or something. All right. So let's go and do that. What do we need to do to do that? Do we need to change the data source on this page or do we need to change the grid view? Grid view? Grid view, because we're making the link look different. See what answer with confidence I'm going to ask you why. Yeah. All right. So I want to pass a second field on the query string. I want to pass the league name. The data format string then will be ID equals zero, ampersand, name equals curly bracket one. Let me bring this into Notepad so we can take a closer look at it. So, teams.aspx, id equals curly bracket zero, name equals curly bracket one. Where do we get zero and one? We get that from our list of columns that we specified as the data navigate URL fields. The zeroth one, league id, will get put after id. Number one will get put after what did I call name? All right. So now let's run this. Make sure it works. It 
as I hover my mouse over it. Did you hit cancel? I think I get cancel is right. Yeah, they did like reverse the cancel and OK, didn't they? Um, sure seems that way. HTML, a field with the name team name. Oh, that should be leak name. Yeah, because we're talking about lead, not team ID. Now if we look, if I hover my mouse over that, notice on the query string on the bottom, it says ID equals 4, name equals Babe Ruth. ID equals 5, name equals Pony. I can view source and I can verify. And that'll work with like that space in between Babe Ruth? Yes. There, there's ways that we could we could be a little safer for doing that, but we'll not worry about it for now. All right. So, but when I click on it, what? No name. It doesn't do anything with it. I haven't coded. It gets passed on the query string, right. but I haven't coded anything on the second page to do anything with it. So, might as well do that now, All right? So I can go and I can put on that second page, a label. <coughs> and in the page load event, I can say something like, Label one dot <coughs> text equals I never remember this. Something dot value. Something dot something, right? There are two things that are in almost every server side uh, scripting language or, or, or platform. There's a request and a response. The request is what comes from the user to you. The response, or from the client to you, the response is what you're sending to the client. In this case, is it something we're getting from the client or sending to the client? Getting from, we're getting from the client, so it's going to be request. Dot. Query string. That is an associative array, and I can go in and specify the name of the field I want, which is in this case cleverly enough name, and we should be in business. says the lead name over top of it. Is everyone clear why I pass it on the query string? I pass it on the query string for two reasons. One, I wanted to demonstrate how you can pass and use two items from the query string. So part of it was for demonstration purposes. The second purpose, second reason is it seems overkill 
if a second earlier I pulled the name of this league, and it was Babe Ruth, to go and re-hit the database again on that second page. So I'm just going to be confident that chances are it's not getting updated between the time I display this page and the time I click on the link, and therefore I'm going to simply pass over the value that we had. I did have a question. Yeah. On the, where you passed over on the second page, mm -hmm. you put it in that label. Yes. Can it be added to that, the, the grid view as well? Or is it... It could, but what would the point be? Because for every one of these, for every team, right. every team belongs to that league. So really wouldn't be a point of saying the league with every team. But we could do that. I just wondered if you could still turn it, send something. You could actually, if you're going to do that, it probably would be better off to actually pull it from the database if you're going to do that. Okay. Yeah. But in this case, I want to display it as a header. I can go in and do it that way. All right. <clears throat> Let's say. Let's look at. <coughs> let's look at our database. Now let's think through a problem here. Well, just bear with me for 15 minutes. <laughs> Let's consider solve this problem. Right, let, let's, let's raise a problem. And I realize that, you know, sometimes I raise problems that are a little convoluted, but I want to demonstrate something. So um, I engineer the problem in a way that's going to demonstrate what I want to do. Let's say I have a kid that is 12 years old. All right. So I want to type in the kid's age, 12 years old. I want to see then all the account of the number of baseball and softball leagues there are that he is eligible to play in. All right. I then, when I click on the number or when I click on the sport, I want to see a list of all those leagues. Okay? So here's what I want to do. I want to see, I want to do this. click on the sport, I want to go to a page that shows me all the leagues for that sport. Do we have to do it in a text box? Because I would rather do a drop down. Because then I know that 
that's a good way to do it. What I am going to disagree with is maybe the reasoning. Okay. Do you do something because then I don't have to write validation to do it? No. no. Why do you do something? We can prevent errors in any scheme. We can make it. We can make it where the user had to type in the words for the age. So if it was they were 13, they'd have to type in T H I R T E E N. Yes, that's what I mean. Because 50% of the people put one three. 50% of the people put T H I R T. -E -N. Okay, my point is, is we would do what we think is going to make for the best user interface for the user. The best, most usable interface for the user. So, for example, and this is, this is so one of, my, um, one of my pet peeves. A lot of applications will give you a date picker to pick. Alright? Or they'll give you a year picker, even better. Alright? And maybe I don't like this because it's a blow to my ego, but anymore I gotta scroll for ages to get to my year of birth. Alright? Because if it brings up like, you know, 2014, and it's like scroll, 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 scroll. Okay, there I am. Boom. I would just as soon type in my birth year. That's probably easier for me to do that. I get the same thing for dates. There's a thing, um, I think when we enter grades, where I have to put in a date, and I have to use the date picker for it. All right? If I know the date is 9-1-2014, I should just be able to type in 9-1-2014. Don't make me use a date picker. Maybe make it available if I want to, but don't require me. The point is, is whatever considerations you have, it should be from the perspective of what makes it more usable. So, if a drop-down would make it more usable, then yeah, you should use a drop-down. I'm just thinking, and this is, you're right, when it becomes like your birthday, you got to go all the way back, right. whatever. But in this instance, I think of it like that because there's only like six or seven. Okay, leaks. and that, that's a point well taken. You know, so yeah, you could just as well use uh, a, 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 a drop-down for the date, yeah. or even a radio button, you know, because again, there's only a certain number of, of years that we're interested in. I'm going to really simplify this and say we're going to forget about the date for now. <laughs> All right, forget about the age for now. Because I want to do this in steps. All right? Now, this page. So we're going to simply show all the leagues by sport regardless of the age range. All right, so not going to take into account the age range. It's all the same. I'm going to turn this off. Turn it on. Two classes in a row, I'll tell you. No, I don't know. No. One of my uh, uh, one of my ex-wife's teachers, every time a phone went off, there was a quiz instantly. <laughs> Boom. Quiz. Oh, I'm definitely turning In which off. case, I would leave my phone intentionally on and tell, my, tell Huffman to call me at like 1030. You know? <laughs> and I might even, if you guys caught on to that, I might even be devious by like planting my phone elsewhere in here beforehand. Like open, <laughs> taping it underneath one of those things. Put it in the ceiling. Put it in the ceiling or, or put it like underneath where Alan sits. That so it be... looks like it's Alan's phone. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't done that to me yet. After yeah, yeah. And actually I just thought of it now. So <laughs> you, you've been warned. Okay. All right. Let's take inventory. What's this page going to look like? What's it going to have? What controls is it going to have? Grid view. Grid view to show a list. Yeah, I me me too. What else is it going to have? The, are we going to do the uh, label for the team? Yeah, label for the sport. For sport. What else is it going to have? Should have a, a home button. I just always think there should be a home button. To get okay, home. maybe maybe a link back to home or whatever. That's a good point. What else does this have? Data source. Data source. What's the query going to look like for that data source? It's going to be the sport ID. Well, what what's oh, will be that's, 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 that's select yeah. star, star from, from, 
from sport. Are we showing a list of sports here? We're showing a list of leagues here. Select star from league. Equals question mark. Where? What equals question mark? League ID equals question mark. Where league ID equals question mark. Sport ID. Sport ID equals question mark. <laughs> where that one thing equals question mark. Right, where something equals something, right. Where are we going to get that question mark from? The query string. Query string. So we're going to have this page. Maybe it's called leagues.aspx. And we're going to pass the league, oh, I'm sorry, the sport ID on the query string. Now you got me doing it. What's this page going to look like? Same thing, just different SQL statement. Oh, you can have a grid view again, right? I right, have a grid view again. Could you just do a master page and just have the second page inherit everything from it, except for the SQL statement, or would it inherit the SQL statement as well? It would inherit the data source. So yeah, the, the, the SQL statement would come with the data source. So you couldn't do that then? Mm -hmm. What if we did data source for the, for the popular The data source, source for this. What's this select going to look like? Select all from select sport. sport. Uh, you just oh, want baseball, you just sport. want baseball and softball, or that's all well, I want to see the list of sports, whatever they are. Right now, it's baseball and softball. Right. So you still select all? No, because you just want number of leagues and sports. So you would want select sport and. Remember, there's going to be a column. Yeah, it's so, so what? Sports dot. Sport name. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? So, it's like sport dot sport name. And is that number of leagues or is that the number of the leagues? Number of leagues. Count. Count. Yeah, that's it. Count. Count what? IDs? League ID? Maybe. We could, just count the we could either do League ID or we could say star. Oh. That'll do the same result. Are we done? No. From? Okay. Are we done with the select part of this? Should be, yes. Does anyone think differently? What does this guy need to do his job? He needs the sport ID. He needs a sport ID. So, mm, yeah. so sport dot sport ID. Right. So we're not done. We need the sport sport ID. Does that have to go before count? Does no. it count always oh, as good? No. So even though we're not displaying the sport ID, we need it, right? Because we need to pass from page one to page two. Right? So we're not necessarily going to display it, but we need it because we need to pass from one page to the other. From. Do we need, do we need another comment, comma in there before this? Yeah. Board? Okay. From. Uh, sport. Mm -hmm. And then league. Okay. Like I did originally. So there is no per 
parameter here. So there's no, going to be no question mark in this guy. This is simply going to show us every sport, every league. All right? But I probably still need a where clause. Why do I need a where clause? Because it needs to know where it's getting the information from. Well, the table names say where it's getting the information from. You have to link the two together, right? Remember what happens if you don't, if you have more than one table and you don't associate them, if you don't say how they're associated, then it will match everything in table A with everything in table B. So, I need to match up leagues and sports. So how am I going to do that? League equals sports. League dot sport ID. Sport ID equals sport. Equals sport dot sport ID. Am I done now? I get the specified count. Uh, Repeat that, please. In your count, uh -huh. we have the asterisk. We could do league dot. We could do league dot star. We could do league ID. We could do star, and, and it will work. But we are missing something. What is count? Counts the amount. All right. Is count a column in our database? No. What do we call? Things like count or average or sum. It is a kind of calculated field, but it's a special kind of calculated field. Can we look at one row from the database and tell and say what the value of count is? No. No. What do we have to do to determine the value of count? Or what does the database have to do to determine the value of count? It has to look at a group of rows. And count the number of rows in that group. What is the name for functions in SQL that don't work on an individual row, but work on a group of rows? An aggregate function? What was that in the back? <laughs> an aggregate function. An aggregate function. Very good. It works on an aggregation, all right? Not an individual row. So the statement was made computed column. And that was close to being right, but actually there are computed columns that could work on a single row. For example, I could have price and quantity. I could have a computed column to say, total amount, which would be price times quantity, and I, that would be for one row. What's special about this is if I look at one row, I don't know the value of count. I have to look at a group of things. So whenever you have an aggregate function, what is our special consideration? What clause may we have to add to our SQL statement? Group by. Thank you. I was trying to think what voice I would say that one in. <laughs> we need a group by. Why? Because it's an aggregate function. We can only give a value for a group of rows. Well, we have to define how the groups are going to be broken down. All right? So what's going to appear as part, what's going to appear in my group by clause for this? Sport name. Anything else? I guess the sport ID two. Sport ID two. Now, that might not be immediately obvious why you do that. Because by definition, a sport ID is tied to one name. So you would think by doing that, you would, you would cover it. But you do. Here's the rule with aggregate functions in group by. When you use an aggregate function, everything in your list of columns must either be in a group by or an aggregate function. Next time, we 
can explain why that is. But this is one of those things like gravity. Even if you don't understand how it works, it still works. And you need to pay attention to it. All right? But if we look down this list, sport name, is that an aggregate function? Nope. So it better be in the group by. Count, is that an aggregate function? Yes, it is. Okay? doesn't need to be in the group by. Sport ID, is that an aggregate function? No, it needs to be in the group by. All right? So just based on that rule of thumb, even if you don't understand why, we'll, we'll try to explain why next time, but if you don't understand that, that's an easy rule of thumb to remember. And if you don't do this, it will give you an error. If you have things in the group by that aren't listed as a column here, could still work, but you might get confusing results. So for example, if I did if I just said select count and didn't show sport name and sport ID, it would show me 5, 8, 17, but it wouldn't tell me what sport was 5, what sport was 8, what sport was 17. We'll pick up on this next time and we'll do aggregate functions and do an example of this. This comes in handy, the use of aggregate functions. Again, I sort of engineered this example because I want to demonstrate this, but especially in terms of your project. Think, you don't necessarily need to see every piece of data all the time. You may only want to see data in aggregate. Our whole job of information technology is taking this raw data and transforming it into something usable, into information, something that people can use to do their job. And sometimes you don't need to see all the data. You simply need to see the data in, ag ag in aggregate. For example, think of the different perspective that a dean would have as opposed to an instructor. All right? A dean simply wants to know about the enrollment in a class. How many students are in CISS 243? Right. Dean probably, unless there are some special circumstances, isn't concerned with who specifically is enrolled in that class. They just want to know, hey, that class had 16 people in it. All right. Well, that class, well, we better run it again next semester because they had pretty good enrollment. Or this class only had two people in it, so maybe we can skip a semester and and not have it for enroll, you know, not have it for spring semester because there's not a big enrollment. The teacher, however, has to interact with these folks, so has to take attendance and has to enter grades and 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 so on. So therefore, the teacher would be interested in seeing individual people that are in the class. All right. So as a matter of, by summarizing the data, you can match some people's needs. Some people may need to see the details, some people may need to see it in summarized form. So keep in mind as you're doing this that sometimes aggregate functions are a good way to give, good way to present the data uh, in a way that makes someone's job easier. So for example, I could still display a class listing but if the dean had to go and sit and count how many people were in that class, she wouldn't be very happy. It would be nice if there was just, hey, 16 people are in CISS 243 or whatever. All right, this is where we will pick up on next time.